What's up, Blueberries? My name is Alton Hiltz, and you're watching another episode of Learning Dust. In today's episode, I'm running with a group from Dust University, my old Dust alma mater. They're a great organization to get involved with, especially when you're starting. There's usually lots of people to squat up with, lots of individuals uh, that are very helpful, and they have a very family-friendly um, language and discussion policy on official EU new channels. So if that's important to you, that's a great place to be. Um, I, we're going to be playing on a server that I get pretty bad lag in. So I've chosen my role based on the fact that I know it's going to be much harder for me to perform well. And that role is E-War. So not the E-War, uh, the electronic warfare of dampening, of, of staying out of the enemy's sight. But the role of revealing the enemy. So I'm playing the precision enhancement role. Now this is a departure from most of my learning videos that really focus on roles that the new player is able to get into very easily. This is a very skill intensive role as it requires maximizing a number of skills that you may not focus on very early on because they provide less benefit uh, early on than other skills such as your um, armor and shields and your movement your bio skills it's very they're very useful to have if you're a scout but less they'll be less important for later now for me i got these skills last of all the support skills that i ended up going for these are like the last ones for me to get and i'm a dedicated scout or at least that's what i w have been for a long time so if you are a scout you may prioritize these more especially if you're going to be a kaldari scout as that at currently gets the best bonuses for precision enhancement and range and amplification. Now with Hotfix Charlie, we're going to end up with an, another suit that can run this role pretty well, the Amar Scout. Um, but currently the Kaldari Scout is the one that's best able to run this. And that's a lot of skill points. That's 3 million skill points just to get your Kaldari to 5. And close to another 2.5 million or so to get your... Well, I guess 1.5 uh, to get your range amplification and your precision enhancement skills up to a level that will be um, very useful for this role. So um, I hope you, you know you've probably seen some of the lag that I'm experiencing, and I'm having a little bit of trouble adjusting to this role. Uh, so right here is where I kind of recognize that hey, I need to play a little bit differently. What I'm doing here is just waiting. To, for my clone to terminate. The nice thing about this particular role is even when you die, unless your clone is terminated through an explosion or them double tapping you, you can continue to provide this once you're dead. Now once your clone terminates, you're gonna wanna get back into the fight as quickly as possible. But you notice that I continued to provide the intel from my passive scanning to my teammates until my clone was terminated. So you'll see me do that from here on out where I just sit at that um, screen and I just wait because I'm still providing that radar like benefit even though I'm not able to provide any other role. Now if you're going to play this role you need to be aware of the fact that you're going to be very squishy. Um, in order for the Kaldari scout to run this role effectively they're going to need to give up almost all of their high slots which is the Kaldari's uh, the slots that the Kavala uses to enhance its shields. This is a nice trade-off as far as game balance is concerned, where the Kaldari Scout, in order to be able to provide this particular role and benefit, also has to give up its defensive capabilities. So it's a very team-oriented role. You really need to have a squad to support you if you're going to run this role effectively, because you can't... You'll notice I have 227 shields. That's not a lot. And just about anything can take me out in less than a second. So I was terminated there, so I'm not going to wait around. I'm going to try to get back into the fight as quickly as possible. And I'm just trying to find the best spot to be in. I've noticed here that we've got some enemy up on the uh, orbital defense cannon, which is the, the circular rings that run up from the very sun-looking center. 
And so I adjust. I don't want to be out in the open where I was. So I'm going to come in on these. I'm not really sure where these uplinks are, but they're off to the side a little bit. It looks like it'll be much more difficult for that forge gunner sitting up on that platform to get me. Now it turns out this is a pretty good spot for me to be in as far as the radar guy is concerned. Not so much if I was that heavy. I wouldn't be able to get down if I was the heavy. So I'm going to uh, do a little camping here. Light a little fire, make me some s'mores, and defend the objective. Uh, not a bad place to be in because uh, even though I'm, I'm only running a basic suit, my one range amplifier is able to extend my range uh, for my precision enhancement to uh, an, enough to cover the objective. So I'm giving feeding my team intelligence. I'm also in a position to defend the point through this really narrow slit. Um, and it shields me from just about every angle of attack from infantry. So uh, once again, the, the venerable camp is going to take place here. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's talk a little bit about the the nature of this role. Now, uh, personally, I think this is something that CCP needs to take a look at. Uh, in any game, the ability, any first-person shooter game, the ability to see through walls and know where the position of the enemy is is a huge advantage and really needs to be uh, taken into serious consideration especially when you're able to achieve that advantage while maintaining your ability to output dps to tank dps if this role is going to continue to exist in the game uh, it needs to be looked at and ensure that uh, those that are able to run it are having to make some serious sacrifices in order to run it and that it's not so black and white uh, a system that introduces some type of uh, um, so I'm right here I'm just trying to feed some intelligence to my squad mate who's up above them as I, I'm being sniped and I know it and so I'm trying to peek out and but I'm I'm gonna fail here soon. I'm gonna get sniped. And <laughs> but, um, see, yeah, I didn't think the enemy could shoot me from there, but I was wrong. Yeah, so right now, um, e, e War is black and white. You either get somebody on your scan or you don't. There's no variability, there's no um, gray area. You either know they're there or you don't know they're there. And, uh, you know, having some significant experience in the the world of signals intelligence uh, and, and other intelligence disciplines, I know that when it comes to a radio signal, it's very rare to have a black and white. You absolutely know it's there, and you don't. There are some exceptions, um, but in, even in things like radar, you know, when you start looking at radar's capability, there are certain ways to defeat radar, and that defeat of radar just relies on getting under the uh, resolution so you appear indistinct it's not and and other things like elent and comment I mean specialized mazent especially as well so I'm, oh, I was so lucky here not to end in that fiery ball of plasma but a uh, little disappointed that I fell off before being able to, to finish off everybody up there now um, so some type of variability where it's not a black and white, it's not uh, you're there or you're not there, it's some range of precision. So the closer I get or somebody gets to my in scanning ability, the less distinct they appear, the more variability they, they, they'll pop in or out of my scanning range. Now, it's a discussion for the future as it's probably not something that's likely to be in implemented in dust. but. Uh, as you can see, I, I mean, I can, my awareness of what's going on around me is very significant, and I'm able to do things uh, and, and set up certain situations that I wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Knowing where somebody's going to be is huge, and I'm able to get around my low hit point totals by this very fact. The fact that I can set up the conflict, I can ensure that I get the best drop on the enemy, and that's... It just really comes down to how powerful this particular role can be for you and for your team. So 
I'm trying to, you notice I'm not running out, I'm not trying to go and take on all these enemies. There are a ton of enemies and the likelihood that I'll be flanked or I'll get so focused on one particular enemy that I won't see another one is pretty high. So I'm just staying down here and that's a viable role for me to fill when I'm running Ewar because all of this information is being provided to our team and it's giving them the opportunity to make decisions that they otherwise wouldn't be able to make. Knowing where the enemy is allows them to set up their attacks, their pushes uh, a lot better. Now I'm hoping for an orbital. I don't know if we have one or not, but at this point I'm, you know, the enemy has been so clustered up that uh, I'm calling for it from, from the squad leader if we have one. There we go. So we just got one, and so I'm still hanging out here trying to, to give the squad leader intelligence information to be able to use to place that orbital so that we can then push. So there's the squad leader. Um, yeah, I'm hoping that he'll uh, head into the orbital screen pretty quickly because we need to push on that objective to get, uh, get it back before the enemy closes the gap uh, too much more. So sometimes it's not a very glamorous role to play. Uh, because you're doing a lot of hiding, you're not always just running out after the enemy. You're sitting in, sometimes you're sitting in positions like I am, where I'm just trying to prevent the enemy from having some freedom of movement. Um, you know, if they push out, I'm trying to keep them pinned on the objective. And that's that's a viable role to, to play. It's once again, it's a little bit of more of a support role, less of a slayer role, and uh, what I call a disruption role. Now, disruption is a little bit harder to find define than logistics or assault or slayer. Um, but I'm going to cover it in, in the next video, and stay tuned. It's it's a role that uh, is very important to the battlefield to the playing the objectives. But uh, like I said, it's less well defined than say Ewar or one of those other roles but it has very well defined characteristics so as you can see I'm most of the shotgunners here that are playing that sort of e-war dampening role I'm out um, I'm have I'm running more enhancers than they're anticipating now one of the things that they can do is they can slap on those enhancers and start hunting me which they don't ever really do i think maybe they don't recognize the fact that they're being spotted that uh, i'm beating them at that e-war game but uh if you're running the the shotgun cloak role and you start feeling like you're you're dying a lot then um what you need to do is just dampen up because you know, when you're playing that role, you get accustomed to being able to defeat most players. Because most players don't sacrifice their hit points in order to be able to run this in-depth role. Uh, or, but I am. I'm willing to do it because I'm, I'm not so concerned with getting my kills up. I'm not so concerned with dying. I'm just trying to provide my team with that information. So don't judge me too harshly with my aiming. It, I've got a lot of things going against me this particular the match with the server lag. And of course, you know, coming back into dust and really struggling anyway didn't make it um, a good situation for me to end up in. But like I say, I'm just trying to be, you know, play that, that role as best I can, provide my team with a little extra DPS and a lot of situational awareness. We've got some heavies, we've got some assaults, and the precision that I can provide them is going to give them a lot of survivability. With the number of shotgun scouts that I've seen running around, this is absolutely invaluable to them. So one of the nice things that I can provide as well is awareness of tanks. So tanks are very interesting. They disappear off radar a lot um, off the tack net. And it's unfortunate that something so big, so loud, and so powerful can absolutely disappear when somebody in a scout suit, you know, might not might not disappear. Uh, I've been in numerous situations where I'm seeing everybody around me and I can hear the tank, but it's not showing up on my radar. 
uh, even though it's right behind me. And that's, a, you know, unfortunate because it provides that a lot of situational awareness that in reality it shouldn't have. Um, tank Modern tanks are very much reliant on infantry supports because they are, they're such, they are very situ situationally awareness challenged. So there it is, uh, you know, I hope that it has been insightful for you as far as the power of this particular role is concerned. Um, providing that situation for awareness for your teammates can go a long way to helping you achieve victory. If we hadn't, I think we wouldn't have won this battle. Now, it turns out that, you know, I ended up doing okay at this particular, you know, role and uh, coming away with a pretty decent placement on the killboard. But as always, my name is Alton Hilt, and I will see you in the sandbox.